Jose Mourinho signing a striker for Manchester United was the priority this summer. We've also needed a centre-back, but arguably one of the most important positions that we need to strengthen this summer is in central midfield. We do not have much strength in depth there at all. Michael Carrick cannot operate as that defensive midfielder on his own for the whole season. But who will that be? Eric Dyer, Nemanja Matic, Fabinho or Timu Bakayoko? Now, it all looked like Bakayoko was set to join Chelsea and it still pretty much does. But it hasn't stopped the press from linking in with a move to Man United so much so that the Daily Mail and the Mirror are suggesting that Man United are trying to gazump Chelsea for Bakayoko just like we did with Romelu Lukaku. Here is a story. Now, the original story on Monday night came from the Daily Mail, came from Matt Barlow, who is a Chelsea-based journalist. He said that Man United were prepared to pay more than £40 million for Bakayoko. Now, obviously, we were linked with Bakayoko earlier in the summer, but the rumours sort of died down a little bit with us being linked more heavily with his Monaco teammate for Fabinho. But with Fabinho sort of going very quiet, this seems like a very appropriately timed article just to come out just as Chelsea are about to secure the signing and there are suspicions over whether or not this is actually the case but he is not the only one pushing it. If you look at the Darren Lewis from the Mirror he is also reporting the exact same story. But now who are these two journalists? Matt Barlow, as I said, a Chelsea based journalist. He hasn't got anything to do with Man United having looked back at his recent articles. And the same goes for Darren Lewis who is clearly a London based journalist writing about Arsenal Leighton Orient, Spurs, Chelsea, etc. Neither of them are Manchester-based journalists. So there's nothing here from Mark Ogden, Samuel Luckhurst, Ian Ladyman, all the established journalists that we know and trust. Well, not 100% trust, but we know have links to Manchester United. Surely a story like this will be coming out in those areas and not just from the Chelsea areas. Now Sky Sports are saying that Bakayoko is close to a move to Chelsea and that the delays in his move there have come as a consequence of him having knee surgery at the end of last season, giving minor delays towards his medical, which has been supposed to happen in the last two weeks, but it still hasn't. That's where the delays came from there. And the Manchester Evening News had a little snippet on it as well. They said that while Matic and Dyer are the two preferred options, the concept of coming over the top again and beating Chelsea to a player means that Bakayoko is now appealing. Now, Matt Law has had something to say about this. He is saying that Monaco were quite angry with Chelsea because of their payment structure, the delays in the deal, and the fact that they don't want to pay more towards the £40 million mark for the 22-year-old. And there's also a suggestion, and he points towards these claims that Man United are ready to come over the top and beat Chelsea to Bakayoko. And he has said that there is no interest from Manchester United from that respect. And he also goes on to say that Man United sources are still hopeful that a deal for Nemanja Matic can be pushed over the line, despite what happened with United, Chelsea and Lukaku. So what does this all mean? Are Man United hijacking this move for Timu Bakayoko and are going to claim him just like we claim Lukaku and bring Bakayoko to Old Trafford instead of Stamford Bridge? I don't really think so. And that's my own personal opinion on this. I think there is real credence to the theory that this is more a move from Chelsea's PR team to sort of save face in the concept of when they do sign Bakayoko, it then looks like they've beaten Man United to the signing of Bakayoko, just like we pushed them out of the way and brought Lukaku to United. I think if Man United and Jose Mourinho did want Bakayoko, we would have pushed for him earlier this summer. I suppose the same thing could be said with Fabinho, who's been available all summer long, yet Man United have dithered and dilly-dallied, but maybe they haven't dithered at all. Maybe we just haven't been pushing for him, despite reports from Gianluca Di Marzio that we bid 45, 50 million euros for him. So, Bakayoko, I always said at the start of the summer, I would have liked to have seen him join, but all of you guys and girls convinced me that Fabinho was the more suited player for our needs this summer. And this, at the end, just before it looks like he's joining Chelsea, for me, feels more like a push from Chelsea to save face after the Lukaku deal. But maybe it's Monaco pushing it. Maybe Monaco are getting frustrated with how long Chelsea are taking and they want to make sure that they realise that Bakayoko is not 100% destined for Chelsea and that other clubs can come in. Maybe they are using Man United in this respect. But do I think we will sign Bakayoko at this late, late time? I don't think so personally, but maybe you'll disagree. I mean, what options do we have? We need a defensive midfielder, a top draw defensive midfielder this summer. Bakayoko was obviously one of the options. Then you got Fabinho, as I said, it's been dragging out so long with Fabinho. Now there are reports from L'Equipe in France saying that Atletico Madrid 
are closing in on a £45 million deal for the midfielder. Not Man United. Then you look at Eric Dyer. These rumours still aren't going away, although the price tag is getting linked to around £60 million. Baffling. And Matt Law says that we still want Matic. We've got Matic, Dyer, Fabinho, Bakayoko. Who is it going to be? Who do you want as that defensive midfield signing? I've got a sneaky suspicion it's Fabinho. But surely if we were going to sign Fabinho, we would have... Why haven't we been pushing it? Maybe this whole Lukaku and Morata situation has distracted Ed Woodward and he hasn't been able to concentrate on a defensive midfielder. And that's where all the focus is now that Lukaku deal is done. But which defensive midfielder do you see Man United signing? Let me know in the comments below because we absolutely need one. If we don't sign one, I, I just feel that the signings of Lukaku and Lindelof will be pretty irrelevant because we won't have a midfield. If Pogba or Herrera get injured, we've got no one there. And we don't have a top draw defensive midfielder even when everybody is 100% fit because I think Herrera is going to be played further up the pitch this year and Carrick cannot play every single game, not with us back in the Champions League. But what do you think about this defensive midfield situation? It's definitely the biggest thing that Mourinho's still got to sort this summer. But how will he sort it and who will he bring in? Let me know what you think in the comments below, as always. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe to United People's TV down there if you're new. Is it down there? I don't know. And we'll see you soon. Take it easy.